First precinct, Sergeant Burns. Yeah, that's right. We want an ambulance up here at the station house. What's that? Oh, yeah, an injured prisoner. Well, who gave it to you? C.B.? We got no You're name in the room at the 21st Precinct. Well, how nerve center. Be here? A call is coming well, through. You will follow the action taken pursuant to that call from this minute until the final report is written in the 124 room at the 21st Precinct. Well, he'll have to go to Bellevue. He's a prisoner. Okay. Yeah. We'll be looking for them. 21st Precinct. It's just lines on a map of the city of New York. Most of the 173,000 people wedged into the nine-tenths of the square mile between Fifth Avenue and the East River wouldn't know if you asked them that they lived or worked in the 21st. Whether they know it or not, the security of their homes, their persons, and their property is the job of the men of the 21st Precinct. The 21st, 160 patrolmen, 11 sergeants, and four lieutenants, of whom I'm the boss. My name is Kennelly, Frank Kennelly. I'm captain in command of the 21st. I was working my night tour, 4 p.m. to 8 a.m. The weather was cold and still. After a brief flurry of activity between 8 and 10 p.m., including a two-alarm fire on 2nd Avenue, a bad auto accident on the East River Drive, and the attempted robbery of a delicatessen on 86th Street, things quieted down. I turned out the platoon for the 12 to 8 at midnight and went on patrol of the precinct. Things were still quiet. At 1.35 a.m., Lieutenant Patrick Gorman was on duty as desk officer at the station house, and Sergeant Fred Burns sat at the telephone switchboard. The stillness was broken occasionally by the hum of the switchboard or a call over the monitor of KEA, the police radio. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Burns. Could you connect me with a detective, please? Yes, sir. Just a second. Sergeant. Yes, sir? What time is Jacoby due to ring in? Well, let's see. It's 40, Lieutenant. When he does, ask him what the delay is on that notification from the 92nd. Yes, sir, I will. Oh, 12 to 8, getting me down, Lieutenant. When do you swing? After this tour, thank goodness. That's Jacoby. I hope you'd better let me talk to him. Yes? No, it's not him, Lieutenant. The call for the detectives, they're finished. Oh, Okay. What time did the skipper say he'd get back to the house? He didn't say. How about a cup of coffee, Lieutenant? There's some hot back there. Oh, no, no, thanks. I've got a lot of stuff to write up here, and I've got to file all the cards. That's Jacoby. You still want to talk to him? Yeah. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. Is this the police? Yeah, that's right. Oh, you said the burglar in my apartment. There was or there is right now? There is right now. I saw him. I came home and opened the door. And Lady, there wait a minute. There he was. Do you live in the apartment all along? Someone you know. I'm sure. I'm positive. Oh, is he still in the building? I, I think so. I, I think he's still up in the apartment. All right. I'll send the officers right over there. What's the address of your apartment? 194 East 68th Street. Uh, are you talking to the police call box on the street right there? Yes, that's right. All right, lady. You just stay right there. Wait for the officers. Will I be here soon? Yeah, right away. If you see the man come out of the building, remember which way he went. See if he's got a car. All right. Officers will be there right away. What have you got, Sergeant? A lady with burglars, Lieutenant. Communications Bureau, Patrolman Donahue. This is Sergeant Burns at 21st. Will you send a car to 194 East 68th? A woman rang in on the call box and said there was a prowler in her apartment. She's waiting on the street at the call box. Okay, right away. One burglar? How many does she need? Car 681, car. Car 681, it's 70th and 2nd Avenue. Better ring upstairs with the detective sergeant and give it to them, too. Yes, sir. But they'll hate me for it. As soon as the call was received by sector car number three, patrolman Paul Vaccaro, operator, and patrolman William Coley, recorder, they started on the three-block run to 194 East 68th Street. Following instructions in the manual of procedure, they did not sound the siren in order to approach the scene quietly and apprehend the criminal, if any. I don't see it, Coley. 
Maybe she's standing around the corner. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, there she is. You're the one that called the police? Yes, that was me. You see the one? Yeah. Which building is it? That one across the street. How do you know it was a burglar? Well, I, I had this date, and I, I came home. I, I went upstairs and opened the door, and he was in the apartment. Uh-huh. Didn't he jump when you opened the door? I don't think he heard me open the door. Did you see anyone come out of the building? No, not at all. The street door locked? Yes. Give me your key, miss. Oh, yes. Uh, here. Which apartment is it? 2A, the second floor right at the top of the stairs. Mm -hmm. Does this key fit the door upstairs, too? Yes. Oh, uh, you better wait down here in the hall, huh? All right. Right here. Okay, Coley? Yeah, let's go. Get set. She may be right. I'm set. Hey, the door's standing open. Yeah. Yeah, she must have left it that way. How do you like that? Old timer, come on. Wake up, Pop. Well, how did he get up from the barry? Come on, Pop. On your feet. Oh, come on. Come on. What do you want? What do you want? Sit up there. Come on. Sit up. Uh, let me alone, will you? I've been through all the ladies' liquor. Now sit up. I don't want to sit up. I can't. Look, hold him still. I, I want to see what's on him. Now sit up. Let me alone, will you? Will you let him alone? Uh, nothing. We'd better get her up here, Paul. Yeah. All right, Pop, sit up, will you? Shut it out, huh? Let me alone. Don't give me a pass, son. Just sit up. Miss? Was he in there? Yeah, he was in there. We got him. You better come up. Is it all right? Yeah, yeah, it's all right. Well, who is he? How'd he get in? Man, we haven't had time to find that out yet. Was he trying to steal something? Just your liquor, it looks like. My liquor? Oh, uh... Before we go in, let me get your name. Huh? Camden, Audrey Camden. Is that Miss or Mrs.? Miss. It was a strange sensation opening the door and seeing him. Yeah, I'll bet. C O N P D E N? A, C A. Oh. You uh, live here alone? Yes, that's right. My apartment. You see, I had a date tonight, a business date, really. I, I'm a fashion designer. This is a client. All right, let's go in. We went to a nightclub, and he just took me in the downstairs door. Poor old man. He's your burglar, Miss Camden. Get in here. Oh, should I know? I don't know. I got in, that's all. Are you looking for a drink? I don't know. Look, Toby, this is Miss Camden. You know this man, Miss Camden? No. How would I know him? Nobody knows me, nobody. Oh, look. Oh, my two-fifths of 12-year-old scars. I got them for Christmas and I was saving them. He would rather have had canned heat, Miss Camden. Oh. What's your name, mister? I, I had a name. I, I did honest. Right, what is it? I had one. All right, now, come on. Let's have some answers. You yeah, sure, sure. What's your name? You don't have to talk to him like that, do you? How else would you talk to him, lady? Suppose he would have hit you over the head when you came in. He might have if he hadn't found a whiskey first. How'd you get in, Pop? I live here. You do not. I do. I've always lived here, right here. I'd better ring in, Buchanan. Yeah, go ahead. This is my home. Can I use your phone, Miss Camden, to call the station? Yes, uh, right over there. It's all mine. Oh, uh, thanks. I can come in my own house, sing my own whiskey, can I? Oh, I thought you'd get out. I didn't do it. How'd you get out? I don't know. Where do you live? I live here. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burke. This is Coley, Sergeant. Oh, yeah? What you got there? Well, there was a prowler in the place, all right. We got him. Any trouble? He was asleep in the chair, Sergeant. He's a rummy. How'd he get in? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. If we can ever get him down to earth enough to talk sense. All right, come on in here with him when you get through there. Yes, sir. Oh, uh... Yes, Sergeant? The captain heard the call in the air. He rang in here to ask what it was. I told him we hadn't heard you. He's probably on his way there. Okay, Sergeant. I have another call, Coley. Yes, sir. Bye. Now, come on, Pop. Sit up straight there and talk to me. Uh, my house. My house. Maybe you need some coffee. He needs a lot more than coffee, Miss Come Cameron. on, Pop. How did you get in here? I live here. It's my house. The captain Paul. Captain. Coley. Captain. Well, what do we got? This is Miss Camden, Captain Kennelly. Hello. Miss Camden. Sit up, Pop. Uh, uh, 
He came home and found him in a place. Oh, look, you'll pass out again. I don't know who he is or how he got in. He found a liquor and did away with two bottles of prize guy. A Christmas gift. Oh, uh, Merry Christmas. How'd you get in here, mister? My house. I live here at my... Oh, look, Pop, we played around long enough. How'd you get in? What are you doing here? I live now, here. Now, come off it, will you? I do. I got the key. Proves I live here. Stay out of that pocket. I'm getting the key. Yeah, give me that. I live here. All right, let's try it in the door, the car. Yes, sir. Go on with my key. All right, now sit. I want my key. I'll worry about your key. Sure. Get Go it. Go ahead, try it, the car. Yes, sir. Well, that's funny, Captain. Couldn't work better if it was made for the lock. It probably was, the car. That's funnier still. The derelict who was caught unlawfully inside the apartment of the fashion designer, Miss Audrey Camden was taken to the station house by patrolman Coley and Vicaro. The victim, Miss Camden, was told that it might be necessary to appear in court at a later date as complaining witness. She agreed. As I resumed my other duties, the arresting officers escorted their prisoner, slightly recovered but still rather unwieldy, into the front door of the station house at 2.23 a.m. All right, Pop, go in. I'm going. You want your money? Take it steady there. Go on, up to the desk. Who you got there? Willie Sutton? Yes, Sergeant. You want to buy an interest in my commendation? There he is, Lieutenant. Better take him upstairs and let the detective talk to him, Coley. He's not in much of a talking mood, Lieutenant. What are you doing, huh? Stand on your own, too. Better Please, take him up anyway. Uh, okay, Lieutenant. Who's making the call? Are you, Coley? Yes, sir. Okay, get my hand upstairs, Mr. Carl. Yes, sir. All right. And come back down and report to the captain. He has to ride up to the 23rd. Yes, sir. All right, come on, Pat. No, I don't want to go over. Everything, Sergeant Brown. All right, now, steady, steady. All right. <laughs> you go for your meal now, huh? Come on, Pop, come on. Don't let me alone. Just walk. We let you alone. You're through the door. That way. No, I didn't do nothing. I was in my own house. You're living in a dream world, Pop. You should stick to bay rum. That scotch is poison. Go on, up the stairs. I live there. Upstairs. Go I ahead. Do. I well, do. Well, you live here now. Get going, will you? I bought the furniture. I paid the rent. And the telephone and the lights for everything. Yeah, for everything except the scotch. Scotch, too? The scotch, too. Upstairs. Scotch, me. too. Oh, will you pop scotch and rye and gin? What? No beer? No beer, too? Are you living, pop? Watch it. Right. Come on, pop. You can do better than that. Go ahead. Just right to that door. Detective. Join me first, squad. Detective. Is that where I'm going? You're there. Inside. Go on. 21st Squad, Detective Kenny. Over there, sit down. And now oh, he's not. Uh, Come on. And no, he's not here either. They're out on a plant. I'm here all alone. I'm catching. Sit down, Pop. Yeah? Oh, uh, In the chair. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, all, all right. I'll see what I can do, yeah. Uh, uh, um, is this for me? With my compliments. Is this the whippersnapper who breaks into ladies' apartments and drinks their whiskey? Uh, it's my apartment. You stick with your story, Pop. It sounds good to me. Well, goodbye, one and all. I just hope he's got nothing to say. Leave it open, Bacow. Okay. All right. What's your name, Pop? Tell the man your name. We've been having that trouble with him all night. Mm. Look, mister, I really don't care what your name is. Not personally, but I got to make out what we call a 61. And the first thing I got to do is put down your name. Is it going to kill you to tell me? George. Jones. Couldn't you have thought of a better one than that? George Jones. George Jones. How old are you, George? Take a guess. I'm 58. Now we're moving. Sit up, Pat. Where do you live? If any. 194 East 68th. Well, let's stop playing, Pop. Where do you hang out? Down the Bowery? What place? 194 East 68th Street. All right, no known address. You got an occupation? Unemployed. That's nice work. Now, what were you doing in the lady's apartment? It's my apartment. Come on, Pop. I'm carrying a pocket full of squeals. I got no time to wait. Excuse me, gentlemen. 21st Squad, Detective Kinney. No, he's not here. Who's calling? Oh, no, sir, Inspector. Uh, not tonight. Lieutenant King's due at 8 in the morning. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir, I'll leave a message for him. Why do inspectors sound exactly like people? Beats me. So, what were you doing in your apartment? I just went home. Well, we're not going to get any place with him tonight, Coley. Book him in. We'll try him again in the morning before you go to court. Okay. I just went home. Look, he had a key that fit the door. If you want to put that down. Is that the key? Yeah, that's it. How did it come to fit the door? Give me my key. All right, sit down. I, I want my key. Sit down. Give me that chair. Yeah. It's mine. Watch it. Brother. What a flop. Let me get the phone up. Yeah, it's all right. Yeah, it's all right. Let me get the phone up. Think he knocked his head on the corner of the desk. Yeah. Pop. Pop. Ah, he's out good. That's the question whether it's from the whiskey or the fall. From the both, I guess. Pop. I ought to call downstairs and have the ring for an ambulance. Yeah. Come on, Pop. Nothing. You better call. He doesn't look so good to me. An ambulance was called, and the prisoner was removed to Bellevue Hospital for treatment of a head injury and acute alcoholism. According to Article 24 of the Manual of Procedure, in any unusual occurrence concerning a prisoner, including such an injury, it is contingent upon the commanding officer of the precinct to make a complete and thorough investigation. In response to a radio call, I returned to the station house from the 23rd precinct, where I was making an inspection as senior officer on night duty in the division. By the time I finished my interview with Detective Kinney, Patrolman Coley had returned from Bellevue, where he had accompanied the prisoner in the ambulance. I talked to him. The incident appeared unavoidable. I instructed the desk officer to check Bellevue every hour to inquire about the condition of the prisoner. It wasn't until 7.30 a.m. that the doctor said he would allow questioning. After I turned out the platoon for the 8-4 to four tour, I rode down to Bellevue with Lieutenant Matt King, commanding officer of the 21st Detective Squad. We drove into the hospital grounds at 26th Street and 1st Avenue and went by special elevator directly to the prison ward on the second floor of I Building. We identified ourselves to the Department of Correction guard, and he opened the steel door and admitted Lieutenant King and me to the ward. Thanks. That's right. him there. Okay, thanks. Okay, he's been washed, fed, and he's a new man. Almost. Thank you. Pleasure. Well, how do you feel this morning? All right. Not bad. I'm Captain Kennelly. This is Lieutenant King. Yes? You gave the name of George Jones at the station house last night. That's not your real name, is it? No. What is? Jetley. George Jetley. Where do you live? No place. No place in particular. Do you remember what occurred in the detective squad office upstairs? Uh, not too well. Do you remember how you got hurt? I remember I wanted my key. I wanted to get it. I fell, I think. I fell and hit myself. Where were the officers when you fell? They were right there. They tried to help me, but I fell anyway. I think that's what happened. I had a lot to drink. Why did you break into that woman's apartment last night? I didn't break into any place. Well, that's where you were found. No, I didn't break in. I used my key. Where'd you get the key? Well, it's mine. How'd you know it fit that particular door? I knew. How? Oh, I used to live there a long time ago. In that apartment? Yeah, right there. When? Oh, a long time ago. Before the war. Way before the war, 19... 19- 35, 36. Come on, George, you didn't live there. Where'd you steal the key? I didn't steal it. It's mine. I used to live there. I didn't mean any harm. I just wanted to see if she was still there. Who? My wife. My boy. I got a son. He's 22 now. 22. Did you expect to find them there? I didn't know what to expect. You see, I I was away. I, I didn't know. Have you ever looked for them? No. I was away. Away where? Oh, California, Minnesota, Chicago, every place. What made you think they'd still be there? I didn't think. I just hoped. You, uh, you lived there in 1935, 36? Yes. Well, what have you been doing since? Bumming around, just bumming around. And you haven't been in touch with your family? No, you, you see, she 
told me to get out. She said she was tired of my going off on tears every so often, hitting the bottle all the time, staying away three or four days, losing my job all the time. I had good jobs, very good jobs. Doing what? I was an editor, book editor. I was good. Publishers always used to say, George, you're a crackerjack. Just lay off the bottle, that's all. Just lay off. And my wife, she said the same thing. She couldn't want me around the boy like that, you know. She, she said next time it happens and I got like that, I didn't have to bother to come home. Well, then I was all right. I was all right for a long time. The first thing I realized, I was in Philadelphia in a hotel. She said if it ever happened again, don't come home, so I didn't. Didn't you come back to New York at all? No, she didn't want me. I didn't think there was any use, so I just started bumming around. All these years? Yeah, all these years. The only thing I kept was the key. You know, you get drunk and guys roll you for whatever you got in your pockets. They didn't steal my key, though. I, I got two dollars and I bought a little silver chain. Wore it around my neck. All these years, I wore the key around my neck. When did you get back to New York? Oh, a couple of days ago, I don't know. Decided to come uptown and just walk by to see what the place looked like. Just walk by. But I didn't have the courage. I had a couple of dollars for some dishwashing I did, so I bought some wine just to get courage. I guess it gave me too much courage. I used my key and got into the downstairs door. And, and I went upstairs. I was going to open the door and walk in and say, here I am. She wasn't there. And then the whole place was different and not my furniture or anything. So I just found the whiskey and sat down and drank it. I, I didn't mean to do any harm. Well, you certainly did some harm. Yeah, I know. Would you tell the lady I'm sorry? I am sorry. You know I am. Yes, I guess I do. You want to find your family? No, why should I do that? Why should I break in on their lives now? I, I want to, yeah. Uh, they're probably happy. I'd only bring them trouble. That's all. Look, now, you, you do me a favor if you just leave me George Jones. Forget about George Jetley. George Jetley should be dead and buried. He not only should be, he is. After the interview was completed, Lieutenant King and I returned to the station house, where before I went off duty, I was obliged to prepare a 49 reporting the facts and circumstances involved in the injury of the prisoner. On the way uptown, Lieutenant King and I talked about the case. We agreed that the charge of burglary against George Jetley would not stand up in court. Burglary involves unlawful entry with intent to commit a felony. In this instance, the intent was lacking. From 42nd Street almost to the station house, we rode in silence. I don't know what Matt King was thinking about, but I had George Jetley on my mind. The dregs of humanity are being washed up constantly. It's not hard to be sympathetic when you think that it might happen to anyone, even yourself. Just before we arrived at the station house, we started talking again. We agreed that a conviction for unlawful entry, a misdemeanor carrying an indeterminate sentence, might be the best thing for Jetley. A term in jail with its attendant medical treatment might be a step toward rehabilitation, if rehabilitation was at all possible. As we walked up the stairs and into the muster room, I suggested to Lieutenant King that he request the missing persons bureau to make a discreet inquiry concerning the wife and son of the man. There was a good possibility they'd welcome a reunion. Well, I've got to get upstairs, Captain. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll see you, man. I'll let you know what missing person says about his family. All right. 21st Precinct, Sergeant Burns. Oh, hello, Captain. Sergeant. All right, 27th. That uh, lady is waiting for you, Captain. Oh. You're Captain Canary, aren't you? Yes. You were up to my apartment last night when that man broke up. Yes, I was there, Miss Cameron. Well, I, I couldn't sleep last night thinking about him. It was my apartment. I, I don't think I care to prosecute him. Well, the detectives are working on it, Miss Camden. You ought to talk to them. I just don't want to prosecute. I, I couldn't go through that, sending him to jail. Well, don't you realize that a term in jail might be the best thing for him? I think jail be good for anyone. Well, it might be good for him. You think so? Yes. That's the trouble with policemen. They're the same old cure for everything. 
Not for everything, Miss Camden. The cure for him is pretty young. Only 22. And we're going to find it. Twenty-first precinct, Sergeant Burns. No, Captain Kennelly isn't here. Detective who at missing persons? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Oh, you located Jet Li's son, huh? Yes, all right, I'll tell the captain. Son's going to visit him at Bellevue this afternoon. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, the captain will be glad to hear that. Yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll get the message. And so it goes, around the clock, through the week, every day, every year. A police precinct in the city of New York is a flesh-and-blood medical round. Anyone can catch the brass ring. Or the brass ring can catch anyone. 21st Precinct, a factual account of the way the police work in the world's largest city, is presented with the official cooperation of the Patrolman's Benevolent Association, an organization of more than 20,000 members of the police department, City of New York. Everett Sloan in the role of Captain Kennelly, Ken Lynch as Lieutenant King. Featured in tonight's cast were Gene Gillespie, Bill Smith, Santos Ortega, Wendell Holmes, Bill Quinn, Frank Moth, and John Sylvester. Written and directed by Stanley Niss. Produced for CBS Radio by John Ives. Art Hannah speaking.